This is Aaron with anetcomputers.com with another video. This video today is about how you can install a Hewlett Packard printer without a CD. Compact disc, compact disc read only memory is what that acronym stands for, the CD ROM. And I'm going to quote you verbatim the issue. They were using a tablet computer. Quote, I'm trying to connect to my wireless printer a Hewlett Packard Office Jet 4630 with an Amatic EWT832NS 2-in-1 Windows tablet. I get a message to insert the CD that came with the printer into the computer tablet, which does not have a CD drive. The tablet appears to see the printer, but I can't get the printer to print. Okay, so what they did is I think they tried to install the printer before installing the software, which with Hewlett Packard that's a mistake but you know most people aren't gonna realize that and I don't really expect an average consumer to not understand that now whenever your computer laptop desk well most desktops have CD-ROM drives but I guess technically maybe there could be some that are so they're on the lower price range and they don't have one. or the compact disk read only memory drives stops working even the digital video disk drive stops working. More, more and more computers, especially laptops, and then obviously tablets. You know, they're they're pretty small. They're not going to have an optical drive. And then, you, obviously, you could you know connect an external. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in a situation where you just don't have a optical drive at all. Period. You don't have access to one. You can always browse to HewlettPacker.com and install your printer software that way. So all you do is download it. Now they were using a Hewlett Packard Office Jet 4630 printer. They were using a Amatic tablet computer that had Microsoft Windows 10 operating system installed. And the blog post Uniform Resource Locator is highlighted on screen. You can type that into the address bar of your web browser and then you can access this Hewlett Packard link. I think it works. It pro it should, you know what I'm saying. It is an executable. It's a direct link. That now that is if you owned a Hewlett Packard Office Jet 4630. If you have all other Hewlett Packard printers, all you have to do is browse to the Hewlett Packard official website and their support, and it'll automatically detect your print your printer model. It should, and then it, it will show you what downloads are available. But most of the, well, especially the newer printers, there could be maybe some older, really older Hewlett Packard printers that are really old, 10 years old or older that you may not be able to find a download for. But I would say most, I don't know about all, I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't, but most, if not all, newer Hewlett Packard printers, they're going to have a download available from their website. I don't, I don't even know if they ship a CD-ROM anymore or a compact disc. I just I don't really know that. Anyways, let's move along. So that's all you do is download the software, but you might want to continue to watch this video because I'm going to give you some tips because I have real-world experience installing printers, and one of the brands is Hewlett Packard, and I found a couple of pieces of information that can save you a lot of time and, and properly, completely, correctly install your printer. Number, number one, here's the number one tip that could be a gold tip. Do not connect your printer yet. Don't don't try to install the software. Don't try to connect it to your computer at all. That I don't care how you're connecting to it. Do not connect your printer w with a universal serial bus cable. Do not connect to it with a Ethernet cable, a network cable, and don't try to connect wirelessly. And I'm going to give you a reason why in a few moments. You will not want to connect the printer to your computer until you're instructed so you want to download the the specific software for your model of Hewlett Packard printer from their website then you're going to want to start the software install then when instructed when the Hewlett Packard software asks you to tells you to then connect the printer and here is why you do not want to try it beforehand 
yeah, you just double click the installer. It may be a setup.exe, install.exe, maybe even a MSI file setup or install.msi. Okay, here's my experiences with the Hewlett Packard printers. Don't ever connect your printer first because I found out that a lot of times when that occurs and it, it doesn't get installed correctly. The, the Microsoft driver may or may not work. It may be a limited driver. And then if then you if you were going if you did try to install the software either from the compact disc, digital video disc, or an online download, it won't necessarily work. And here's why. If you connect to it first, it will attempt to load a default driver that may or may not work. Also, when you try to install the Hewlett Packard printer driver, the that install, installation tool gets confused because what it does, it detects that you already have a driver installed, and so it may skip that. Yeah, it may just see, you know, it will see a driver already installed, and it will skip the step. It won't try to install its own driver. You know what I'm saying? And maybe it will, but it may not work correctly. The printer installation program may or may not install the correct original equipment manufacturer printer driver. As an example, let's say in this example, they owned a Hewlett Packard Office 4630 and they connected it first, then they downloaded the software or then they tried to install it from a compact disc read-only memory or digital video disc. Well, it may overwrite the the driver and but it may not install the correct driver and maybe for an entirely different model and there's no guarantees that that will work so when in doubt do not connect your printer ever first until you start the installer and wait for the installer the installation to ask you to connect the printer and i've noticed that with all printer brands basically in the, it may or may not be a problem with all printer brands, but I just learned that with Hewlett Packard, and so I just instituted whenever I installed a printer, I always made sure to wait until the installation program prompted me. Then I installed the, the then I connected the printer. Okay. Okay, then you should be prompted with how you want to print. You will basically have two or three choices, either universal serial bus cable, Ethernet cable, or wireless. So then you choose which connection you want to use. And here's, a, here's another tip. It can be a pain in the ass, so to speak, to change it after the fact. Actually, you there's a tool, but I don't know if you have to reinstall the software. Yeah, there's a, there, you have to go and change it. So my tip is that you know, try to choose the method that you think that you're going to use the longest or permanently. Because if you choose Universal Serial Bus and then you decide you want to print wireless, well, you actually have to go back and change it in the software. You know what I'm saying? And that could be a little bit of a quagmire. And then it's going to, uh, yeah, you'll have to reinstall the printer. But it, it's kind of a different way. Some of the Hewlett Packard printers have that option. Some may not. Some you may have to reinstall the, the software from the very beginning. Some they actually have a selection where it says, do you want to change your, your, how your printer is connected? Then, but you're still going to have to, you know, install a different driver. Okay, let's move along from that. Now, they were using their Hewlett Packard 4630 on a wireless network, so they had a wireless printer. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that that Hewlett Packard printer is connected to your wireless network. That's a, a separate video, but actually the Hewlett Packard install, the more modern printers, actually has a tool. It, it asks you, how do you want to connect your printer? With a universal serial bus cable, Ethernet cable or wireless. If it's wireless, it actually has a tool and it will try to detect your printer. So that's why beforehand, now remember I told you not to connect your printer to your computer beforehand. That is true. But you'll want to connect it to your router. And you'll want it on the same the, the same network that your computer is on. So let's say your computer has just a just a quick IP address 10.0.0.1. You want your printer on the same network. 
just as an example, 10.0.0.2. You know what I'm saying? That way that your computer and the printer can talk to each other, and then when the, you install the software, it can detect the printer. It will. If it's on the same network and the printer's connected, it will detect it. Okay, you will then need to know your service set identifier. That's an acronym for SSID, which stands for Service Set Identifier. It's just the name of the printer. When you go and browse your network or when you go to, let's say you're at Starbucks and you want to use your internet. Well, you see and you you use your your wireless tool on a smartphone or, or even a laptop computer or tablet and you see the Starbucks. That's the SSID. Only obvious, uh, Starbucks is not locked down, but I'm just giving you that example. So you'll want to know your printer's service set identifier. You might just use the default. You can change them, whatever. Just look for Hewlett Packard or the, the model or whatever. But you're going to need to know the password. That's kind of a, another separate video too. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to need to know your wireless password, the password that you use to connect to the, your wireless router. Now, some routers have a dub, dub, dub here quickly. Some routers have a Wi-Fi protected setup button, which which that's, that's an acronym for WPS. You you would click it, but it's on the router, not your printer. And if it does have that button, click on it, and and it'll help you connect to the the printer. And I think it, it even the message shows up on the printer. You know what I'm saying? But that that might that could be a separate video too. Now that you have connected, you know your service side identifier, you know the password, your printer is connected to your computer, and your printer is connected to your wireless router, you should be able to print to it. Now, when it comes to Universal Serial Bus, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. You connect the Universal Serial Bus cable to the back of the printer, the square, and the flat end you connect to your computer, okay? But remember, remember, I gave you a tip at the beginning of this video. I told you that when it comes to Hewlett Packard, do not connect your printer to your computer first. You wait until the software installation program prompts you to and asks you to connect it. Now, the Ethernet cable is going to be similar. When, you, when it asks you how you're going to connect your printer, and you just give it the proper choice. As long as that printer is on the same network, it's on the same IP network, then your computer and the printer will be able to talk to each other. Okay. Now, as far as some Hewlett Packard printer installs, over the years I've noticed they are notoriously slow. These printer installs are slow. Doesn't really matter the brand, but especially Hewlett Packard. So you want to become patient. Don't, don't. You know, you may need to, you know, go to Starbucks or if you have a mistress. I mean, if you have, if you're a male, American male, and your wife has served you divorce papers, this may be the time to take care of that. And then while your printer software is installing, because it can be really slow. All right. So give, give it at least a half an hour or an hour at the, I would say at a minimum. Then when it'll tell you, it'll tell you that the software is completed. And then after that, you can start to print. Okay, here's a tip. You do not have to follow this tip. But what I've noticed is that this may save you a lot of time. Hewlett Packard has what I would consider bloatware, but they have a lot of tools. They have a fax tool. They have a scan tool. They've got other tools. You might want to go ahead when you install the software, choose everything. Because you may, after the fact, you may be like, oh, well, I want a fax now. Well, you may not have fax software on your computer. You, so you might just want to use Hewlett Packards. You want to scan now. Well, you might not have a scan software, so you may as well use Hewlett Packards. I will warn you, though, it is kind of bloaty, and it's quite large. <laughs> but it, most times it works, you know what I'm saying? Okay, what else? Yes, and then I, this is just repetitive.
Yeah, Microsoft and Apple operating systems are, are almost always supported by Hewlett Packard. If it's a more modern printer, I I don't think I've ever installed a Hewlett Packard printer that that was. What I mean by that is, at the time, it was only five or ten years old, and I couldn't find a download. You know what I'm saying? On Hewlett Packard's website. Now you may now it could be older printers. You may not be able to find a full download. But at the very least, you might be able to find a printer driver. And I would say most newer printers, you should be able to at least find a newer, well, excuse me, a driver. So at least you can print, but you just won't, you know, have the full capacity. I already went over this, blah, 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 blah. You may be asked to register your Hewlett Packard printer. Also, you, this is bizarre, but you may be asked to enter in your t fax information. You may or may not be able to skip those requests I, I don't I have no idea why but whatever during the install now finally after you came back from your your meeting with your lawyer i mean <laughs> the hewlett packard software may be finally installed now here's another caveat you might be asked to sign up for the hewlett packard instant ink program that is optional you do not have to and i'll give you since i'm i'm well into overtime i'll give you some additional tips about hewlett packard instant ink it can be a okay here's a warning if you use a hewlett packard printer cartridge that is not part of the hewlett packard instant ink program Guess what? And then you and then you yeah, you mean you you can't print. So let's say you subscribe to Hewlett Packard Instant Ink Program, and they ship you a ink cartridge, and then it works, and then you go out to Best Buy or wherever or Office Depot, and maybe you find a cheaper one, and then you install it. Wrong, wrong, wrong answer. You, you said that, yes, I could print. No, you're wrong. Because you have to cancel the HP Instant Ink subscription, and then you, they, what do they do? They basically lock you out. I'm not making this up. Yeah, over the internet. The internet is stupid things, I mean. Okay, so that's just a warning. If you want to subscribe to the Hewlett Packard Instant Ink program, I think it may, I would tell you, you may want to study it first. Find out what you have to do, all the details. Find out what happens if you cancel, because I'm not making this up. That's a common problem that I've noticed, is people, when I supported every day on a third-party website where I earn supplemental income, that was a common question. That was a common problem. Well, I do, or if your subscription is behind, you're, you're behind, you haven't paid your bill, or, oh yeah, it's ugly. And anyway, I don't want, I don't want to talk about HP, Hewlett Packard Instant Inc. I just don't want to talk about it anymore. Cause it, it, at times is a nightmare and I just don't. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that crap. Okay. What else? Now, if, if you do not subscribe to Hewlett Packard Instant Ink, yes, you can buy your own printer cartridges, but they have to be the exact model. If there's some the wrong model, or if they're not from a third party, you might want to purchase them directly from Hewlett Packard. But it's up to you. Just make sure that you. What you can do is you can take out the printer ink cartridges and look on them and look for the model and perform an internet search. You might be able. To Buy them on eBay, Amazon, even, believe it or not, Craigslist, just wherever. And I would, you could even get refurbished if you wanted to. Just be, make sure it's the exact printer cartridge that works for that exact Hewlett Packard per model. Otherwise, you're just creating another quagmire. Okay, now these instructions were written for an Amatic 2 in 1 tablet computer with Microsoft Windows 10 operating system in, installed. And their printer was a Hewlett Packard OfficeJet 4630 printer. Now, these tips you could use for other printer brands and other operating systems. You know what I'm saying? The instructions may not be the same, but the thesis, antithesis, synthesis may be similar. Now, that was my video pertaining to how to install Hewlett Packard printer without a CD. You can always browse to internetcomputers.com to fix your most common computer problems. You can also find out all of the platforms I'm available 
YouTube.com slash Computers, Twitter, Twitch, Trobo, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and, oh man, and even Rumble. How dare I? Is we censor YouTube? Are they going to terminate my channel because I mentioned that my video, shh, don't tell anybody, my videos are available on another platform. Oh, how dare I? Adios.